Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Stepping Up. I'm your host, Daniel Dubois. This week, we feature one success story of how a governmental agency was able to assist a privately owned company to scale up and start export. And later on for Link Up, we feature St. Lucia truck superstar, Julian Alfred. Export St. Lucia is the government's national trade export and promotion agency and is mandated to spearhead the island's national export developmental effort. Their overall objective is to increase aggregate volume and value of exports and works to promote and expand business in export markets around the world. We sat down with Export St. Lucia's Public Relations Officer, Jason Darius, to help us know more about the agency and how local businesses can access their support systems to achieve export capacity and quality. Let's take a look at the interview. Tell us a little bit more about Export St. Lucia. Hey Daniel, thank you very much for having me. Um, well, Export St. Lucia, like you said, our mandate is really to help move exports, um, help businesses get to that export level and help give out the best of what St. Lucia has to offer in terms of product services and let the world in on what we have to offer as a country. Mm. So we work with um, small businesses, we work with manufacturers, um, agricultural producers, we work with anybody in the scope of business that has that mandate and that effort to export and really help push their business forward. Mm -hmm. And that is really our mandate at here at Export St. Lucia. Nice. And what about the history? Let's talk about the history of Export St. Lucia. I know they, they did a rebranding recently. Um, what, what is the history of, of Export St. Lucia? Well, Export St. Lucia, I guess in the early beginnings, we started off at as OPSR, the Office of Public Sector Relations. That was a small office in the office of the Prime Minister that really dealt with um, private sector, really small businesses, just helping to manage businesses and help them get what they need. Um, and then, I guess, TIPA came about. Um, that's the Trade Export Promotion Agency. Um, really the same mandate, but with a more, with more of a focus on exports and really helping the the business get that promotion that it needs to help St. Lucian products actually get out there. Mm -hmm. Let the world in on what it is that we have to offer. And then recently, um, we actually just had a name change, Export St. Lucia. Um, so just the name change, nothing else has changed. Our mandate is still is, well, mm -hmm. it's still to increase exports and make sure that we put off the best of what St. Lucia has to offer out there to the world. Nice. And with your interaction with small businesses, how does Export St. Lucia intervene? So let's speak mm -hmm. directly to the programs that you're offering mm -hmm. and the support that you offer. So let's say I, I want to sell mangoes and I want to export mm -hmm. mangoes or whatever. And I realize that the export is not only about um, physical goods, tangible mm -hmm. goods, it's also about services. Because I know you exactly. guys touched on music recently in terms mm -hmm. of how we can package our music. So. Let's talk to the programming. How does Export St. Lucia really and truly intervene on behalf of small business owners? Okay, so you would imagine there's, um, there's a chain. There's a couple of steps that you actually have to get to before you get to us, I guess, helping you out. Um, at first, you would have to register your business, go through the chains such as SEDU to help get your business really on a good foundation, mm -hmm. so to speak. So when you have that foundation set and everything is in place and you look to expand, looking to get your product out there, that's when you come to us. And then we really help to guide you, give you that helping hand that you need to navigate those waters. Um, for example, if you would want to get into the UK market by exporting mangoes, like you said, we would look at the, any restrictions there are, if any standards that need to be met, if there are any hurdles, challenges, we would help you. Um, overcome them and really help you get your best foot in that door so not only are you likely to get in that door you're likely to stay in there as well and we were talking before and like you said consistency is key we really are just like a helping hand to really get you into the markets where you want to go in terms of your exports and that's what we are here to do sorry right mm -hmm. so in your interaction with um, business let's just side um segue a little bit into how are businesses in St. Lucia losing the opportunity to mm -hmm. export? What is it that you see mm -hmm. our small business owners not doing to be able to, um, I don't want to say exploit, but use mm -hmm. the opportunities that they have available to be able to export? How can we, um, on a personal level as a business owner mm -hmm. yourself, what is it that you see that is lacking in our, our business community in St. Lucia? For me, what I think it is, it's um, that access to information, that access to knowledge. 
people want to do things but they don't really have that um, knowledge or they don't know where to go or what to do and that's where we come in mm -hmm. we help with that process we help find what it is that you need to actually get you off the ground and running so this is why we are here and this is exactly what we do but like you said um, what's missing is really that knowledge that information dissemination aspect of it and that's what we are working so hard to actually accomplish and just spreading information making sure everybody has what they need everybody knows what they have to do in order to get things done yeah nice yeah? i know that export Indonesia recently won a few awards let's mm. let's let us know a little bit more about that and that's the thing again we like to work with uh, we like we like working with solutions. We like our people. We like knowing that we made uh, like a huge difference in, in, in people's life, not only on an island level, but only like in communities, on the personal level, just hearing those stories. So our award that we won at the WTPO Awards um, that happened last month, um, we won uh, the award for Best Initiative for Inclusive and Sustainable Trade. That was with our Policy Most Farmers Association. Nice. Um, many of you will know like the amount of work that we've put in with the policy most farmers association getting them from really no CMOS being produced or limited CMOS being produced without anybody having any market for anything except for locally mm -hmm. and then getting them to the UK market then that US market and then having them stay in there and having continuous trade happen between St. Lucia and the UK no, just everybody wants alone. to grow CMOS everybody wants <laughs> to grow the CMOS you see? <laughs> And it's very lucrative for them and uh, having impact in those um, CMOS farmers from Poale, it really goes a long way in helping, helping our future, brightening our future as a yeah. people in St. Lucia. So this is like really what we want to do, how we want to help our people, how yeah. we want to impact our people. And that is just one of the many stories that we have out there. And if that award, we got what runner up for that award after Procomer, that is one of the biggest TPOs in the world actually and to get runner up after them for that yeah. award that means that we are doing something truly remarkable yeah, right here at Exports yeah. and Lucia. And it shows that there's a unique opportunity to develop these small cottage exactly. industries that is not just to, to, to serve local markets, but it can you can export your goods, people. Exactly. You just have to ensure mm -hmm. that the proper standards and procedure are in place to actually meet those mm -hmm. meet those requirements for yeah. those territories and we're in business. Nice. Yeah. So let's talk about some more success stories. Well, I know <laughs> for sure about the CMOS farmers. Mm -hmm. They really hailed Export St. Lucia, like for the sure, same way so. you're talking about them. So that that's, that synergy, that linkage there is solid. Mm -hmm. um, what other success stories do you have to share with us? Um, well, just from this year alone, we have been doing a lot of stuff. I, you mean, sorry, I mean, you would imagine that with COVID, a lot of the stuff that we had in the pipeline, we would have to try to redirect efforts, try and look for alternative routes. And in the inspiring words of our CEO, in spite of what can happen in spite of this, mm -hmm. what other routes can we take? So um, earlier this year, we actually had our biggest trade missions to St. Vincent and Grenada. Right now, as a result of COVID-19, what we are doing is to just follow up on those, um, make sure our linkages are still strong in the in the regional territory as well as international markets as well. So we're just following up on these things. So testament to that would be recently our 20-foot container of cleaning products from Chemical going off to Dominica. That was last month, October. Um, another shipment from Abbey, a new exporter, well, relatively new to Guadeloupe really. Um, sending off chips to Guadeloupe and you have Forest Springs sending 4,000 plus cases of water over to St. Vincent and these are just some of the successes that we had mm -hmm. thus far in spite of COVID. Mm -hmm. So just imagine what we could have accomplished in spite of COVID, what, what we really could have accomplished. Um, I mean, we continue to... Yeah, like you're on a, a big thirst. There. Exactly, and mm -hmm. we just had to try and maneuver those waters, see what can really happen. And we continue to promote and advocate for our businesses who still take part in um, trade shows, whether it be virtually or with a limited presence. But we still advocate and really lobby for our clients, our businesses in St. Lucia. And that's what we really are about. Nice. So how does supporting businesses with exporting, how does that benefit the country as a whole let's speak to that because we always talk about things like diversifying the economy mm -hmm. and finding um boosting up our manufacturing and stuff like that mm -hmm. so this show is for anybody who has a business anybody who <laughs> has anything that they're thinking of scaling up 
reach out to export St. Lucia because the long run is it benefits St. Lucia. So of let's course. talk about how this 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 echoes your 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 national development and national economic growth mandate as well. Exactly. So take a look for take a look at Simos for example. Mm -hmm. Um, there was this cry for a really long time for us to diversify in terms of our, our agricultural offerings to the table. For a long time, we'd have heard about bananas and everything. Bananas, banana exports are dying off. We need to diversify. So um, we started looking around, seeing what can be done. And then we found this opportunity here. We saw the need for this to be taken up. And we worked with the CMOS farmers assiduously to get them to that level, to, to buy into yeah. what we see can happen with this product. And lo and behold, look at it now. Yeah. So this is just one way of bringing, bringing more of a success to our country. Yeah. I want to take that back. Um, just, how would I say? This is just one way of helping our country be grow. successful, yeah. helping us grow, helping mm -hmm. just, fostering growth for us yeah. because we realized when we did the feature with the CMOS farmers mm -hmm. um, they basically they did um, talk about how everything in the area just started to grow and yeah. that's what people don't recognize that once there's a demand you now have to expand on the ground mm -hmm. you now had a little lady selling um, by Prale or you had the boxes and the packaging and, and all of these things are along um, the line everybody benefits so I think when it comes to that aspect of it, like once you secure that outside market, you're actually securing growth for yourself and your community and the country at, at large. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So we continue to work with the CMOS farmers and we continue to work with those smaller industries, like I mentioned earlier, just to help them see their potential and really meet that uh, market standard and help mm -hmm. them keep up with the demand as well. Because if you meet that standard, you get in the door and you cannot keep up with the demand, that is something else. People yeah. lose confidence in you. Mm -hmm. So you have to sustain that demand and um, sustain that product coming in. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and, and that is really it for yeah, us. Part of it. Yeah. To intervene. Mm -hmm. That's nice. That's to intervene and just help bring off the best of what you can be. Yeah. Um, moving forward, I know before we start talking, you gave me a story about breadfruit export. Yeah. So let's talk about what you plan to do for breadfruit and any of those natural raw products that, mm -hmm. that, that are available. Okay, so we are looking at a couple of products, um, particularly for agriculture, like you mentioned earlier. Um, breadfruit being one of the ones we've had to work with the most recently. Um, what we've noticed um, as of late that some of our offerings, they, they end up being spoiled more or less when they actually get to, get to market, especially in the UK because of some of the conditions. What we try to put together right now is a training session for our exporters of breadfruit, for them to know the proper practices, protocols, procedures that should be implemented in their picking, harvesting and um, shipping off of the product to actually get them the best product when it actually gets to that destination so they wouldn't have any problems in terms of a buyer being dissatisfied or yeah. something something just being wrong with it yeah. um, so we put all these in place just to ensure that we have the best product possible when it gets yeah. to market yeah. and that really is the end result that is what we are trying to do with breadfruit and a couple of other agricultural products but mm. more on that will come about in time well jason thank you so much for taking your time to chat mm -hmm. with us here today so just let us know how we can contact you what the process would be like to access some of your support your services somebody who got to see the show for who sure. might be like hey i could probably try and see because i know we're very um big on chocolate mm -hmm. and we don't even tap into these markets exactly. yet the, the rural the, is it rural women's association mm -hmm. i know there's one in miku there's babono so Let's talk about how anybody watching this show can access the support from Exports um, St. Lucia. Well, all you have to do is walk in, although people can't really walk in now because <laughs> of COVID-19 and everything. Yeah. But you can call in, you can, can, you can contact us via our website that is www.exportstlucia.org and that's mm. St. Lucia, S-A-I-N-T. Mm. And it's the same thing on all our um, social media handles. We're talking about um, Instagram, Facebook and Twitter at Export St. Lucia. Anybody could reach us, just shoot us a message and we will reply. Really open, we yeah. are here to help. Nice. Yeah? Well, thank you very much, Jason. No problem, Daniel, anytime. Tired of battling large numbers of mosquitoes in the comfort of your home? The more you fight, the more defeated you feel. 
How about taking on a longer lasting solution? Ensure that drums or buckets are properly covered after each use. Drain and dispose of any unwanted containers to reduce potential breeding grounds for mosquitoes. Do not allow tires to collect water on your property. Fill them with soil to make your own vegetable gardens or plant flowers. Poorly disposed garbage can collect water. Use secure bins when disposing of garbage in order to reduce mosquito breeding. Keep vegetation low to allow daylight in and remove hiding places for mosquitoes and other pests. Check your roof gutters regularly to prevent mosquito breeding. Regularly inspect your property for signs of mosquitoes. Following these tips once a week can reduce the population of mosquitoes in and around your home. For more information, visit or call the Environmental Health Division in Guadalajara, Grosely at 468-3700 or 468-3737. Welcome back. Thank you so much, Jason, for letting us know more about the opportunities Export St. Lucia can provide to support local businesses to expand to export capacity. Thank you and keep stepping up. We continue our journey into understanding the role of Export St. Lucia and highlighted a local company that has benefited from their support. Chemical Manufacturing and Investment Company Limited Chemical is now exporting products to Dominica and hopes to expand further regionally. We went down to Viewfort to visit their main office and manufacturing plant to learn more about this long-standing local company and how Export St. Lucia assisted in the regional export. Thank you so much for saying yes and agreeing to do this interview. How are you today? I'm fine. Thank you, Daniel, for visiting us and I'm pleased to be able to speak with you today. Uh, my name is Thomas Rosary and I'm the Managing Director for Chemical Manufacturing and Investment Company. We have been around from 1986 and that, that is about 34 years ago. <laughs> we, we started this plant. Yes. Uh, it has not been a very easy road to travel. We have had our own challenges in terms of getting the plant to where it is at this point. However, I, I can recall when we started in 1986, we started with a little concrete tank and we were practically using our hands to do the mixing of the, of the chemicals. Wow. However, we have come quite a a long way at this point and we produce now apart from the household bleach that we started with we produce some 22 other products which you will get a chance to see in a little bit but generally it's been an uphill struggle but we're still around and we are happy to be here to be able to provide the products that can developed the war against COVID-19 the, the COVID yes. and we have been very lucky in the sense that we have been able to stay in production. Our employees have not been affected to date and we have about 55 persons employed with this organization. Wow, 55 persons who have not lost their jobs due to COVID-19. No, no, we have right? had no downturns whatever. So talk to me a little bit about why bleach? What was the you know, I'm getting a little bit of history from you. I didn't know that you were into cars and insurance as well. So talk about the, the what made you start chemical. Initially, we used to distribute a product by the name of Mavex, 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 Mavex Bleach, which was produced in Ancillary. Okay. And that's many years ago. I was the key distributor for bleach on the island oh. and I found myself in difficulty with some of the local distributors who were importing bleach into the country. At that time Marvex bleach was protected by government and so persons were unable to import bleach on island and for whatever reason the efficiency of the plant was not there and I, I came in fact a lot of the persons who distributed the product on the island was at war with me because we could not supply when I observed that Marvex could not supply on the island I decided that 
hey, I better do something about it. And that's when I decided that I would set up a facility to produce a similar brand of product. And in August of 1986, we introduced chemicals into the market. Wow, so you basically developed chemicals started by solving a problem. That's correct. Solving a problem. So we were now able to supply some of the local distributors mm -hmm. and we are here. Yeah. And how easy was it? Were you, how easy or was it easy for you to establish? Because, you know, 1986 and now is a long time. How easy was it for you to penetrate the market? What was it like with the, were you welcomed on the, the local market? So talk about your, your, your deals. Well, let's not forget that when I, when I started Chemical Bleach, I was already well known in the marketplace as a distributor. As a distributor. Okay. And not only that, but I had established myself as a supplier for office stationery on island okay. so pretty much everybody knew me then okay. and so getting the product marketed at that time was not a very difficult task i used to be a driver salesman and i would go around the island marketing the product so it was it was not difficult to yeah. get the product established yeah. and basically you're already in the supply channel so right now you have to just step Branch back off. and go into the, the production aspect of it. That's nice. It. So, you know, of course, uh, we know that recently that you were successful at um, um, exporting to Dominica. Can you talk to us about that and let us know? Well, exporting to the islands have always posed a challenge for us. Many years ago, we used to distribute the product in Guyana, in Antigua, Dominica, and um, Grenada. However, I had some difficulties then, especially in the, in the stability of the product. And we were experiencing a number of problems with the packaging. Okay. And so we lost some money initially as a result of that. And even in the local market, we have had our own problems. I'm sure, I, I, I don't know if you know it, but we have had people complaining about caps uh, and uh, uh, cracking and stuff like that. Okay, okay, okay. We have been fortunate in the sense that we have solved those problems. But manufacturing is not one of the easiest things to get into. And, and so we have more or less fine-tuned the packaging of the products. And so there is greater acceptability of the product in both the local and regional market and with the assistance of Export St. Lucia and especially I, I have to thank Anthony John for, for his continuous support in, in helping us put this thing together. We, we had quite a bit of assistance from Ms. Alphonse who was with Export St. Lucia at the time but from the time Anthony came in, we have had some success and we were able to export our first container of products right. to Dominica. And that's the first time you've exported in how long? In maybe the last decade or 15, so. 20 years. Wow. So what exactly did Export St. Lucia do to secure that opportunity for you guys? Well, I think they had a, a trade show okay. in Dominica okay. and of course, some of the some of the distributors in Dominica came to see them and they introduced my, my, my company and my products to them and they subsequently contacted me and I have been communicating with them along since and Anthony has also been following up yes, yes, yes. On, on, on what's been happening. So together we were able to, to secure finally that. secure. Yeah, they were able uh, to uh, give you that exposure to be able to. Nice. That's right. What's next for you? What's next for you? Especially you on the advent of COVID nineteen. You and imagine during COVID you were able to secure that shipment. And I guess because the type of business you in sanitation, which is something that's like way up there in terms of demand. Yeah. Well, actually, when when. Um, 
COVID-19 hit the island, we, we were not prepared for it. And we experienced quite a bit of shortages because the demand was so heavy. Yeah. But since, since then, we have been able to streamline our production. external purchasing okay. to accommodate the production level that is required. Yeah. And so now, imagine we were able to complete that Dominica order. Yeah. So we have been able to keep the local market supplied. Yeah. And where do we go from here? It's a matter of time before we are now targeting the other islands in the Caribbean. And we are working along with Anthony as well to making sure that we are able to capture some of the business that are on the other islands. Nice. I am very encouraged by your story, especially, you know, we had a little chit chat before and you spoke about the development and the growth and really and truly it wasn't all of this. It started with what you said, a, a small town. <laughs> and that's how you used to make the bleach. And I used to make the bleach with <laughs> by mixing the chemicals by hand. Yeah. So yeah. It, we've come a long way. So with that, you know, as we conclude, what message do you have for young people, anybody in business today? You know, just based on your journey, what what can you share with others? A lot of people believe that you must have a huge amount of money to start a business. I started on a shoestring and one of the things I did is that I found a need and I was able to fill it. So don't think that you cannot start a business without having money. I, I had the cooperation of a lot of people and I think that I developed quite a trustworthy attitude with everybody that I did business with and as a result I am able to do the things that I'm doing by having the trust of a lot of my, my suppliers and one of the things I have learned is that if I go to a shop and they don't have a product there must be a reason for it and once I can find the product it means that the owner of the business probably have not had the time to go looking for that product or nobody with the product have come to them to supply them. So when I walk in and I ask for, let us say, razor blades. As a little shop owner, you're supposed to have razor blades selling. So what I do now is I go find who wholesales razor blades. I buy it and bring it for them. And I make a percentage. And that is how I have been able to succeed in a lot of my businesses even without money because what I do is that I come to you who can supply and I say to you well listen I have my brother here who needs razor blades give me a supply of it I will bring it for him when he pays me I will pay you nice. and the collaboration continues yeah. and that can happen with many businesses in St. Lucia yeah. where we Creating can that ensure and linkages, yeah. we become the conduit in supplying what is required. Mm -hmm. So don't think that you need a whole ton of money. You can, our employment problems can be resolved here quite a bit by people becoming creative and developing the sales attitude. The sales attitude and solving problems. And solving. Solving problems. We complain so much. They complain, but yeah. once you can solve somebody's problems, yeah. you have a chance yeah. to make somebody. Nice. And that is the secret of it. Mr. Rosie, thank you so much for this interview. Um, I must say I really enjoyed this opportunity. And um, I'm looking forward. He promised us a tour of the plant. Yes. So I'm looking forward to seeing how it all goes down and that chemical bleach or disinfectant you have at your home, you're going to see how it's made right here in St. Lucia in Beaufort. So we'll be right back. I couldn't help end this, end this discussion without introducing Carla, who is our general manager and she does all of the coordination of the plant and she has been of tremendous assistance throughout the years with us. In fact, she cel she's recently celebrated her 21st, 20, is it 21? 22nd. 22nd year with us. Wow. So, 
she looks young but <laughs> filled with experience. Long standing um, employee. Exactly. Nice, nice, so nice. she's been of tremendous value to the company. Okay, okay. Mm. What is it like working for Chemical? I mean, you spend most of your, your life working at this local company. It's been a, a good experience. I mean, it's had its ups and downs, and, but all in all, it's, it's, it's been a great experience. Mm -hmm. yeah. What is it that you would like to English to know about Chemical? Um, you know, it's just been an indigenous company. Everybody knows about it, but yeah. you know, what is it that you think St. Lucian should know about the company? Well, we have a range of cleaning products for almost every need. And our products have been upgraded. Um, they're more um, environmentally friendly. And we have removed a lot of the carcinogenic um, raw materials in there, um, which is safer for people with sensitive skins, people who have um, allergies and sinuses and stuff like that. I want to especially thank my wife for her support over the years. She's done a tremendous job in providing the necessary support for me. So to all of our St. Lucians, I say thank you. And to, especially to my staff and all of the employees of the, of the company, I want to say a special thank you for their support and their cooperation. I cannot help but to thank the people of Viewfort and the whole of St. Lucia, who have over the years supported and encouraged us and to help us to be where we are today. I thank every St. Lucian for their support and I look forward to receiving their continued support as we expand and create more employment in the country. Thank you, thank you Daniel, and it was a pleasure having you and I look forward to see, seeing you visit us again. Wash your hands, wash them right. With soap and lots of water. Get between fingers. Get under the nails. Go above the wrists. Do this for no less than 15 seconds. Rinse properly. Dry with a clean towel. If there is no water, do the same washing motions with an alcohol-based hand sanitizer containing at least 70% alcohol. Wash your hands. Wash them right. This message brought to you courtesy the Bureau of Health Education of the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Thank you, Mr. Rosary, for allowing us to visit the chemical headquarters. Now it's time for Link Up. Jinan Alfred is a 19-year-old student athlete at the University of Texas at Austin. She started track and field at the age of 9, and at 14, just finishing Form 2, she embarked on a new track journey at St. Catherine High School in Jamaica, where she broke two junior records in both the 100 meters and the 200 meters and won the annual Digicel Grand Prix under 20, 100 meters. She's won several medals and broke international records. A silver medal at the 2018 Youth Olympic Games and in 2019 outdoor season, she broke the senior national records in the 100 meters and 200 meters. Despite an injury, she recovered and got back on the track, and in December 2019, she set a new national record in the 60 meters, creating history as the fastest 60 meter time ran in December since 2001. Ladies and gentlemen, Julian Alfred. Good morning, Julian. How are you today? Good morning. I'm doing fine, thank you. <laughs> and I understand it's really, 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 really early. And I just want to say thanks for agreeing to do this interview with you with us this morning. So can you tell us about your journey? Um, you said that, you know, that you, you went to Leon Hess, but really and truly your, your, your talent was discovered at the Cicero Combined Primary School. So just talk to us about your journey and, and, and give us a brief summary as to how you at or in Texas today. So I started at the age of nine and... My talent was recognized even before that, and at the age of nine, I joined a, a club in St. Lucia, the Speed, the Speed Sprinty Survivors, and from there, I went to Leonis for like two years, and I went to Jamaica, and my talent was recognized at um, a competition in Trinidad, that's how I got the scholarship to go to Jamaica, and I spent three years there, and after that, um, I took some time off from school and from everything and i got a scholarship to go to um texas okay and is it a, a track and field um scholarship what's what's the what's the the type of scholarship what's the arrangement like so i am on a full athletic scholarship in texas mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay and how long will you be there and what are you studying 
<laughs> so I'll be here for four years, hopefully, if I don't, you know, take on the professional path. But right now I'm studying psychology. Nice. And in your vision, when you were a child, did you envision that it was psychology? Psychology and track and field seems like two very... So tell us about that. Um, honestly, psychology hasn't really been something that I thought about. But uh, my first time representing St. Lucia at the international stage, I realized the importance of a sports psychologist. And that's when I decided I want to study psychology because... I want to like help young athletes like myself, like when they have to like go represent St. Lucia. So that's why I took on that path. Nice. That's an interesting niche. I never heard about a sports psychologist, you know, so I guess they, they take care of like things like the motivation and just try to, to help them through it all. Would you say that sports men and women, uh, um, they deal with a lot of things? What are some of the things as a sports psychologist you would deal with? In that position. Um, I will basically tackle like the mental aspects. So like when, sometimes when we go out to compete, your mind takes control like over your body. And I feel like it happens a lot, especially like with me, like my mind really controls the way I, um, the way I feel and perform. And just having that athlete to like, just control their nerves and, you know, just continue to have positive thinking like when they prepare to like compete so yeah nice um so i know that you 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 competed in a lot of of of, of championships and track and field you've been blazing and winning medals tell us what is what has been your proudest mov moment so far or your greatest achievement thus far um so i have achieved like a lot of great stuff and even though i have done a few great stuff like on the international level i would say my proudest moment would be um winning big 12 and i say that because when i came to texas i honestly i wasn't the best and my first time running at big 12 i only competed in the 60 meters and uh, i placed fifth and last season um the 2019 to 2020 i was leading the nation in the 60 meters and I also won Big 12 and broke the, the Big 12 record. So I think that's my, my proudest moment because of how far I've come. And I guess you had to work a lot on your mental and lots of training. What was your preparation like for, 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 for being able to achieve such a feat? So because I went out like so early last year because of a hamstring injury, I would say I was really motivated to come out and, um, just, just show my true my show my true potential, sorry. And when I got back to Texas, like I've just been, I was just on my toes, like always doing like stuff, like just, just doing stuff at my best, and just trying to be on top always, basically, yeah. And I guess as an athlete, a lot of it is commitment to being your best self and discipline and training i guess the more you train the better you become and it's it's the holistic being that you're grooming and you're developing so from your experience especially from you know um judging your own self and saying you know what i have to do better next time what is it that you have to tell to young upcoming athletes right here in saint lucia primary school secondary school who are all watching Julian and alfred i know that you're a very the prime minister is like your biggest fan you know, so, and he's always talking about, you know, she didn't say, um, she didn't, she just say she was going. So I guess that has, you, in terms of your mind, your grits and your, you know, the fact that you wanted so much, what is it that you have to say to St. Lucians watching you from afar? Um, so one thing that I've learned over the past few years in track and field, um, I would say to always give it your best. I never think that you're like, good enough because there's always somebody out there who is much better than you are and there's always somebody out there who's much faster than you are so giving it your best at all times would be would be best for you and just never think that you like you're the best out there because there's always somebody who's out there that's much faster than that and that's something that i've learned over the past few years 
Mm -hmm. So then you get that solace from just try your best. And once you know you've done your best, you know, that's, that's what makes you sleep at night. Yeah. So two more questions for you. What, how do you think Sanusha can better prepare or support athletes like yourself? So I was training with the speed sprinting survivors and my coach in San Lucia is Kerbert Modest. Most persons know him as Tuatine. And, yes. <laughs> and I think that I got a lot of support from him as a person and one thing that I've realized in San Lucia, like when athletes get to a certain age, they tend to like fall out and not continue. So I think that having coaches in San Lucia who continue to like be after those athletes and continue to like keep them on the game and continue to like motivate those athletes, I think that would be the best for them because some athletes, well, for me, I would say that Tottenham was always on my back because there would be times when I was going to Leonis, I would just go in town online and be and just go online with my friends in town and talk to them. Like, so. <laughs> That's the reading, Alos. <laughs> but they would always tell me, like, you know, those things will, like, always be there. And, yeah. I mean, once I, like, get older, like, those things, like, won't even matter anymore. So I feel like having somebody like him by my side honestly helped me. And I feel like there should be more coaches like that to, like, help those mm -hmm. athletes to, um, to be into the game and to like continue track continue whatever sport that they're in also the support comes from the parents as well once the parents know that the children can like have two potential i feel like the parents can also support those children and, um because my mom supported me all the way and i mean even though she didn't have it all she still encouraged me to like continue track and feel like even what even like she supported me to like go to jamaica i mean some parents wouldn't allow the children to like go to another yeah, country yeah. by themselves and secondary school i didn't know it was secondary school and it big we informed to you just decide to go you bad so i thought it was like a case like you were in form five and you decided to go but i didn't know it was in the middle of your secondary um school tenure so yeah so i was in form two when i left so if she didn't support me that way then i wouldn't i don't think i would have made it this far in my in my career yeah i think people forget a lot about the support systems that we need um, for these people to be able to excel. And sometimes it's not about having the biggest stadium or the best, you know, I mean, these things are important, but it's the push and the, the people and that support system to basically groom the talent. My last question for you. So Julian Alfred, we know that you're a household name. Tell St. Lucia something about you that we don't know. You know, what, what is it that you probably think you could share with us? Um, I'm not sure what, what I, I can share, but I think that something that's, that some persons might not know is that I'm really family oriented. Family um, oriented? Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. And I really love my family. And I mean, they, they're my motivation, honestly. I'm also a very shy person. I realize. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very shy uh, and I'm, I'm an introvert. And but once I like warm up to people, I can be the sweetest and I can be funny sometimes once yeah. I once I warm up to that person. So yeah. Well Julian, I'm looking forward to seeing you at press conferences in Berlin and fans and wherever they have olympics whenever we do have olympics saying thank you saint lucia and thanks to my family i wish you all the best i know we're waiting to see you reach olympics and that we could you know raise our flag high and support you but thank you so much and keep up the good work and all of saint lucia is rooting for you thank you very much thank you for having me Alrighty then. Bye. That's it for this week's installment of Stepping Up. Don't forget to shoot me an email at steppingup758 at gmail.com if you or someone you know should be featured on the show. Thanks again for joining me. I'm your host, Daniel Dubois. See you next time. Until then, keep safe and don't forget to keep stepping up. <laughs>